Hello! This video covers the basic process to make UGC shoes for Roblox. I'll cover how to create shoes for a blocky body type in Blender, upload and test them in Studio, and bundle and publish them on the Marketplace. This is a good video for UGC creators who already have familiarity with 3D modeling and have made other types of layered clothing before. In Roblox, shoes are a pair of layered accessories. This means that the left shoe and the right shoe have their own armature rig, inner cage, and outer cage. You can export them from your modeling software together or separately. Shoes are more complex than other layered items. If this is your first time creating a layered item or a UGC item, or if you just need a refresher, check out these other videos on layered clothing, caging, and UGC creation. Some important notes before we get started. Creating on Roblox is free, but the final step to upload and publish to the marketplace requires a premium account and a Robux fee. When modeling shoes, design them on a mannequin with a body type similar to your intended avatar for the best visual result. In this video, we're using a blocky mannequin, meaning the shoes would look best on similar looking blocky characters. These shoes that are designed for blocky characters probably won't look the same for differently shaped bodies. Modeling in 3D UGC is hard. It's mostly a function of practice and learning from your failures. Check out the intro for each section for additional information and resources. Now let's get started. As I mentioned before, try to design shoes for your intended body type. In this case, I want to design shoes for a blocky body shape, so I want to use a blocky cage mannequin. Since I don't have a blocky clothing cage in hand, I'm converting my own from a blocky body reference from the Roblox documentation. I'll go over this process fairly quickly. For a more in-depth overview of the process, check out the Converting Cages video. In a new project, import the FBX file of the Roblox character body that you intend to create clothing cages from. Since this is a full character body with various avatar components, I'm deleting the attachments and geometry within the armature. In our specific case, we need to keep the armature and joints for rigging later, so don't delete those. Join the 15 body part cages to make the clothing cage. Since we join multiple mesh objects together, we have some overlapping vertices where the different pieces met. I'm using the Vertex Overlap tool to quickly detect and select overlapping vertices. Deselect extra vertices that may have been selected. Make sure to verify the number of vertices and faces with the expected number for Roblox cages. This must be exact or you may face issues with validation when uploading your asset later. After creating the cage, duplicate it and rename it to the inner and outer cage. Now that we have a clothing cage mannequin for the body type we want our shoes to look best on, let's create the actual geometry of the asset. While I'm making extremely simple geometry for the sake of this tutorial, you can use any model you create or have permission to use. I suggest doing something simple at first, then applying your fancy modeling skills later once you understand the process. As you're designing, keep in mind that each shoe must be within the 4K triangle budget and must meet other technical and policy requirements. If you're following along with me, here's the process for making some very basic boot-shaped shoes. Add a cube to your project. Move and scale the cube to the foot of your cage mannequin. Make sure the cube is slightly larger than the mannequin. Switch to edit mode. Add a loop cut halfway through the cube. With face select, extrude the toes of your shoes lengthwise. With line select, select the top and bottom lines of your toe area. Use controller command B to bevel and pull the edges past each other. In the context menu, set the segmentation to 6 and enable clamp override. Add a flare at the top of the boots by selecting the top face and scaling out. After modeling, it's time to add a texture. Similar to the modeling section, this video will only cover the most basic process of adding a single color texture. But I highly suggest checking out other available content that can deep dive into the texturing process and level up your designs. After you feel comfortable with creating your first shoes, apply your creativity using the different techniques and instructions from your own workflows. For now, I'll be adding just a very basic yellow color to our boots. First, we want to create seams, so Blender better understands how to unwrap the surface of our 3D model. Seams tell Blender how to unwrap your surface for texturing. This helps make your 2D texture map manageable and allows you to dictate which surfaces can get the most detail, especially if you intend on importing this image out of Blender and into a different software for the actual texturing process. For the left and right sides, select the contiguous line that outlines the broad side of your shoe. Right click and select Make Seam. After creating seams, press A to select your entire object and select UV Smart UV Project. Add a small island margin and select Unwrap. Switch to UV editing to see your UV islands. If you're working in another program for texturing, you may want to rearrange the UV islands here. 
If your UV islands look good, switch to the Texture Paint tab. On the right Properties panel, navigate to Materials and select the dot next to Base Color and add a new image texture with your desired color. On the left panel, set the image dropdown to the new texture image you just created. Make sure to save this file locally by clicking Image, Save. With our super complex texture completed, switch back to Object Mode and duplicate and reposition our shoe objects. Rigging and skinning is the process of assigning one or more of the 15 character bones to your mesh object. This is relatively simple for our shoes, since we can assign our shoes directly to the left and right foot bones. For humanoid characters or more advanced footwear, you may need to apply more complex weight painting. First, duplicate and rename the armature objects. You need one for each shoe. Ensure that only the shoe object in the correct armature is viewable. First, select the shoe object, then shift-click the armature and right-click Parent with Empty Groups. The order matters for which you click first. Click the shoe object and navigate to weight paint mode. In the right side properties panel, ensure that the vertex group is set to the correct left or right foot. Using the mouse, paint the entire shoe red to ensure that the shoe is fully influenced by the foot bone selected in the properties panel. Navigate to the object mode. Select the armature and navigate to pose mode. Test that the shoe follows your foot bone by rotating bones of that same leg. That shoe should move and follow completely. Repeat the process with the other shoe. Make sure you're correctly applying the correct left or right vertex groups to your object. If you're seeing issues in pose mode, you might have missed a spot with weight painting or accidentally applied the influence to a wrong vertex group. Caging is one of the last steps you'll need to perform in Blender before exporting. For caging, we need to modify the outer cage to wrap over the corresponding shoe. Remember that each shoe needs its own outer cage object. Since our shape is simple, caging should be fairly straightforward. If your shape is more complex or organic looking, caging can take a little bit longer. If you're new to caging or want to watch our professional cage Roblox items, I suggest checking out this video where a Roblox artist cages several different types of items. Some quick warnings before caging. Make sure your starting cage is correct. If you're using an outdated cage or a cage from a third-party source, you might not know that there's a cage issue until the final upload step. You may end up having to redo this step. Do not ever delete any parts of your cage. In this tutorial, I hide vertices but never remove them. Missing cage parts can prevent you from final publishing. Your outer cage should always be outside of your inner cage. Check out our resources for other common caging gotchas and best practices. Each shoe needs its own inner and outer cage. Duplicate the cages and organize the projects so you can easily work on one shoe at a time. Starting with the left foot, make sure the shoe object and the outer cage are visible. With the outer cage selected, navigate to edit mode. With x-ray and wireframe enabled, select parts of the cage that we won't be touching and press H to hide. Do the same with the opposite leg, but keep in mind that there are neighboring faces very close to the vertices we want to edit that belong to the other leg. To hide these adjacent quads, disable X-Ray, select the Face tool, and use the Viewport Angle to select these faces dead on. After selecting, press H to hide, and verify that you haven't hidden any vertices of the cage area that you actually want to edit. You should be left with just the cage area of the specific foot that you're editing. Re-enable X-Ray mode. Starting with either the X or Y viewing angle, use Vertex Select to grab and move vertices of your outer cage to fit over your shoe. Do your best not to cross vertices and try to maintain the general topology of your cage. Keep in mind that you want to perform similar changes to your other shoe, so make sure you're consistent with the vertices you are moving. When you're done with one angle, switch to the other and perform the same steps. If your object is much more complex, you may need to use the Z angle or hide even more sections of your cage to touch up specific regions. After pulling your outer cage over the shoe, switch to a different preview mode to ensure that your shoe isn't visible beneath your outer cage. You should verify this from different angles. After you're satisfied, perform the step with the other shoe.
As always, make sure the outer cage fully wraps around the accessory object without any large gaps. Our next step is to export the model from Blender and get it into Studio as an accessory. Use this opportunity to test the shoes on the body type you designed them for. This is the best time to verify the final look and feel of the asset. It's not uncommon to make adjustments or tweaks back in your modeling tool after seeing the result in Studio. In Blender, first navigate to File, External Data, Pack Resources. This ensures that your image file is bundled with our export. Navigate to File, Export, FBX. Since our Roblox scaled mannequin was imported at 10x, set the export to 0.1 to return it back to its normal size. Ensure that the following settings are applied as well. Check out the documentation for specific details. Export the file locally. In a new Studio project, select File, Import 3D, and select your file. Your model should populate in the preview without any hard errors. If you're missing textures, you can assign the image files directly in the Import tool, or upload the images later to Studio. In the Avatar tab, open the Accessory Fitting tool. Select one of the shoes, make sure to note whether it's the right or left one. Select the correct fields in the Fitting tool and select Generate Mesh Part. After generating, an accessory model populates in your workspace. Repeat this process with the other shoe. At this point, there are a couple ways to test out your shoes. We can import the original character used to design the shoes and play test. To do this, import the blocky character into Studio. Take your test shoes and parent it under the character body model. Rename the character model to starter character. Move the starter character to the starter player folder. Press the play test button at the top left. You should now be able to move around and check out your accessory as it would look on that body type. Alternatively, you can test this character in your shoes in the Avatar Setup tool. In the Avatar tab, open the Avatar Setup tool and select your imported blocky character with the shoes equipped. Test out various animations to ensure that the shoes look and feel as expected. If you're happy with how these shoes look, you can move on to the next step to upload and publish. Shoes are unique in that there are two accessories bundled into one. Besides one extra step to parent them to a single model, the upload and publishing process is exactly the same as any other Avatar UGC item. For more information on this process, check out our other resources and videos on this topic. To upload your shoes, select both accessories, right-click, and select Group as a Model. Make sure you rename the shoes to Left Shoe Accessory and Right Shoe Accessory, otherwise you'll hit an error later. Right-click the model that parents both of your accessories and select Save to Roblox. Fill in the fields and select Save as an Avatar Item. On the next screen, wait for the validation to complete. If there are any issues, you might be able to address them directly in Studio and repeat the upload process. Larger issues, such as problems with the model or cage, may require you to adjust the model back in your modeling tool. Select Submit to upload for moderation. After moderation is complete, you can access your shoes on a creator dashboard to set them on sale or make any changes to the title and description. And there you have it, shoes. I kind of like these big yellow boots, but unfortunately, they don't fit my feet super well. I'll have to make some new shoes based off my current character. Wrapping up, shoes are like any other layered clothing item, but you need to bundle them together before uploading them to the marketplace. Remember that shoes look best on avatars with a similar body type that you designed them on. You might want to create several versions of the same shoes to make sure they look good on different bodies. Keep an eye out for future Roblox tools that can help automate a lot of these processes. Check out the resources in the description for more information. As always, I hope you found this helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments, and keep an eye out for more videos in the future.